I'm the best in the business and everyone knows it. My skills and accomplishments are unparalleled. There's simply nobody better. Ugh, who talks like that? Seriously, who talks like that? Nobody likes somebody who brags about themselves all the time. In fact, there's a proverb that says, let others praise you and not your own mouth. Think about that from the context of a business. You can tell people you're the best all day, every day, but when customers start to tell others that you're the best, that's when it becomes believable. In today's world, in today's business place, your reviews and your testimonials and what customers say about you speaks volumes. Your reviews are your reputation. And so today we're going to talk about when to get online reviews, how to get online reviews and where to get online reviews so that you can have a reputation that precedes you and attracts more buyers, more sellers, more business for you. Welcome to This Week in Marketing. My name is Jason Pantana. I'm your host. I'm your instructor. And today I'm stoked for this conversation because I think it's going to make a massive difference in your business. If you're new to the channel, please tap that big red subscribe button and then hit the bell right next to it to enable notifications. So whenever we publish new videos, just like this one, you're the first to know about it and you can learn and implement all the strategies, all the tactics herein in your business. So without further ado, let's dive into our topic, online reviews. Let's talk first about where to get online reviews. And I can recognize it must feel sometimes frustrating to say, okay, we're going to focus all of our energy on this platform to get reviews. Go, 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 go. Get reviews, ask, 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 ask. And you work so hard getting reviews on said platform. And then somebody's like, nope, that one's done. It's old. Now focus on this platform. Go, 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 get reviews. And I can imagine it must be on some level just frustrating or infuriating because you're like, but what about all the reviews over there? I just busted my tail getting and asking for, do I ask them again? That's the review race that we all feel. And it's because things change and you want to go where the opportunity exists. So today, what I want to do is break down the reasons why you would focus on some platforms over other platforms in terms of generating online reviews. So you can kind of peel back and understand why you should focus on one platform over another strategically. And I'll start first with Google. Your Google business profile is probably my top pick in terms of focusing on getting online reviews. I'll be very clear about why that is because Google is currently the dominant search engine. In the US and Canada, for instance, over 90% of all searches go down on Google, which includes, of course, Google Maps as part of the search experience where your reviews can rank. So your Google business profile is a spot of where to get online reviews. And that Google business profile feeds all realms of Google. It's Google search, it's Google maps. It even feeds Google assistance. If somebody conducts a voice search, for instance, focusing on reviews on Google is critical, especially, and I'll get to this later, seller side reviews. If you've got buyers and sellers, it is more consistent with the search behavior of a seller to go looking for the best agent in a specific area. Buyers, to put it simply, tend to search for houses. Uh, homes for sale, waterfront homes for sale in a set location, something like that. But sellers, it's more characteristic that they'll go searching for agents, best realtor in Milwaukee or some spot like that. And so because they're likely to do that search on Google, your Google business profile is highly, highly important and it's especially critical to prioritize seller testimonials in those reviews. Now, one note to address about Google and just online review collection in general, there is a designated spot in your Google business profile for collecting online reviews. Google gives you an intake form. Sometimes people think, oh, it's the same as if I just record a video and publish the video in my photo section. That's great, but it's not the same thing. I wanna be super clear, today I'm talking about actual online reviews in the designated spot for Google of online reviews. Why? Because Google recognizes those as reviews and they have a different SEO weight. They, they're worth more, so to speak, in terms of how Google ranks and prioritizes profiles. So getting like video testimonials or screenshotting a review from some other platform and publishing it as a post on your profile is great, but it is not a substitution for actually getting reviews. I'm talking about real, they give you the star rating, they include text, a written review, an actual Google review. That's Google. Now, after Google, let's talk about Yelp. I can acknowledge first and foremost that getting reviews on any of these platforms is going to come with some painstaking, tedious, oh my goodness, why won't this just work? Why aren't they publishing my reviews? I'm skipping over all that and I'm looking at the ultimate benefit of continual effort in terms of generating reviews. I just wanna be clear about acknowledging that I know Yelp can have some annoyances with it. Notwithstanding, the SEO of Yelp is 
indisputable. If you do a Google search, for instance, for the best realtors in a set area, yes, your Google business profiles and the map pack and all that stuff will outrank it, but somewhere toward the top of the organic search results, you're gonna see a link for Yelp and you're gonna get people who look there because they trust Yelp to each their own, I suppose, or maybe they actually just go to Yelp first to conduct the search or they use the Yelp app. Yelp unto itself is a powerful platform for reviews, but it's also a gateway to other powerful platforms. For example, Yelp, if you didn't know this, feeds data to Apple Maps. So anything in Apple Maps is actually pulling from Yelp listings and Yelp reviews and Yelp data. By extension, Apple Maps feeds Siri. So if anybody does a Siri search or an S-I-R-I, I don't mean to trigger all of your phones to start talking to you right now, but if you conduct a voice search for the best realtor near me or something to that effect, it's gonna be pulling from Yelp if it's Siri that you're using as the voice assistant. Also, Apple Maps feeds Instagram. If you go looking for, for instance, in the search section of Instagram, a realtor, you'll find accounts, but in the map section of Instagram, which is sort of a new emerging place of finding local businesses and stuff like that. It's also super popular on Snapchat. Uh, Apple Maps is what feeds Instagram. You can in fact find a business that does not have an account on Instagram, on Instagram through Apple Maps inside of Instagram. Okay, now I know that's a lot, kind of a tangled web of, okay, Yelp, let's zoom out. Yelp powers a lot of other platforms. It powers Siri, it powers Apple Maps, and by extension, Instagram through their search map section. It also powers Alexa. So if somebody does a search there with the voice assistant, the data is syndicated over, the reviews come from your Yelp profile. Wow, that matters a lot too. It also feeds Bixby, which is Samsung's voice assistant. The, the point is Yelp kind of gets a lot of birds with one stone in terms of cross syndicating all your reviews. And then there's Facebook, our beloved Facebook reviews, if they're not completely littered with crypto NFT selling stuff and nonsense. Anyways, I digress. Uh, Facebook is also powerful. It's got great SEO. If people do searches for your business or things like that, your Facebook page where those reviews are listed theoretically is going to rank high in the search results. What's more, your Google business profile, because Google is always Googling you and kind of getting a broad picture of you across the entire internet, there is a section on your Google business profile in the knowledge panel display of your Google business profile where it's on that right-hand sidebar where it will Google you essentially and pull in sort of an aggregated rating on Zillow on Facebook and say, hey, on Facebook, there are 4.7 out of five stars, something like that. It's a small little note. It's not that big of a deal, but I wanna make the case that Facebook also has some broader impacts and broader reach than just people reading reviews on Facebook. Facebook also powers Bing. Now I did a video recently about the announcement of Bing rolling out their new AI search powered by ChatGPT. Without getting into detail, this could be big for Bing. This could be real big for Bing, which means Bing could become more popular in terms of being a search engine or a go-to option in the coming months and years. I'm speculating and predicting that. That being true would mean you should focus on your Bing Places profile. Your Bing Places profile is the equivalent of Google's Google Business profile, only it's different in that on your Bing profile, your Bing Places profile, you don't actually get reviews there. It actually pulls reviews from your Facebook page. So if you wanna get better in Bing placement and Bing ranking, then you're gonna to wanna to focus on Facebook reviews as well. So those are sort of the big time platforms, uh, Google, Yelp, and Facebook, and they feed all the other ones. But there's also, in our real estate world, there's platforms like Zillow and Realtor.com. Should you be getting reviews there? And the answer is, yeah, uh-huh. Now, it's your business, it's your strategy, but the argument I typically make with my clients when I'm coaching clients is, look, if you're generating leads off of Zillow or off of Realtor.com or some other platform that allows you to collect reviews, then it is in your best interest to continue focusing on getting reviews there because that's going to increase conversion and it's gonna increase the performance you have with the leads coming from that platform. Now, here's a thought for you, and you don't have to take it, but just let it stew for a moment. If you're buying leads from, for instance, Zillow, and they're mostly buyer leads, then focus your buyer reviews on Zillow's platform and then focus your seller testimonials on, I would say Google because Google's the number one search engine and it's the most likely place where a seller would search best realtor near me or something to that effect. And I want your Google business profile to rank high in the search results so that you can get found by more prospective sellers who then go read your reviews of other happy sellers heralding your praises and they're like, I'm gonna call that agent to list my house. That's your breakdown of all the places where you can generate online reviews. 
Hey, quick sidebar. If all this talk about Google has you thinking about the potential of your Google business profile and what you should be doing in 2023 to level it up, then make sure to check out our course, Google Business Boss. It's part of our training platform, Marketing Pro. And this course is about three hours of dedicated on-demand video content from me that is all about how to optimize and configure your profile, your Google business profile, to rank higher on Google enabling you to get found by more buyers and more sellers, more customers to grow your business. It talks about SEO, it talks about reviews, it goes from slow to fast, from start to finish, all things that you need to know to optimize your profile to get found by more customers online. Your Google business profile is one of the most important assets of all your marketing. Don't neglect it. Click the link in the description to learn more. Now, next up, let's talk about when to ask for reviews, because ultimately you've got to figure out how to ask customers to leave you a review, unless you're intending on reviewing yourself, and that's gonna be awkward, so let's not do that. I would argue that most agents ask for the review at precisely the wrong time. They typically ask for the review at closing. Why is this the wrong time? It's the wrong time because at closing, your buyer or seller is presumably very, very busy with the idea of taking on a mortgage or selling the house they live in to go move somewhere else, they're preoccupied. And so their receptivity to leaving you a review, it's like, oh, okay, uh -huh, uh -huh, I got it, okay, uh-huh, okay. They're not really focused on it at closing. So when should you ask for the review? Well, I would say that the actual asking for the review begins from the very beginning of you doing business with that buyer or that seller. It begins with seeding, laying the expectation or layering in the idea of, I'll deliver you five-star service, preparing the way for you to receive a five-star review on some respective platform, whatever you choose based upon our last segment. So when should you be asking for reviews? Well, I would argue that it begins at the beginning, at the start of working with a buyer or a seller. You should be seeding, laying out the expectation, preparing the way for generating that review at some point down the road throughout the transaction. It begins with seeding. And that's just a simple thing of maybe making some statements like, I'm super excited to work with you all and finding your dream home here. I'm gonna deliver to the best of my abilities five-star service and I hope you'll tell all your friends and family and the entire internet about that experience, assuming I live up to the expectation. Just, I just made that up off the cuff, but something to the idea of setting an expectation. When I first got into real estate, uh, my principal broker said something I never forgot. She said, expectations can only be met when they're understood. Meaning, if you don't make an expectation with somebody, you can't expect them to do the thing you want them to do. And so the time to start laying the groundwork for getting that online review is in the very beginning. You should be seeding it. You should be putting in some assumptive language. You should be laying the groundwork for the review. How else can I say it? Do it from the very beginning. Now, I know that's a bit of a caveat. I didn't actually tell you to ask for the review. I told you to seed the idea of the review. So when should you ask for the review? And here's my answer. Whenever something good happens, now I know there are some platforms like Zillow where you cannot ask for the review until the transaction has been marked as closed. I recognize that. And this is gonna be a level of your discernment and you making the decision about what you feel comfortable with. And I'm curious, tell us in the comments, when do you ask for the review? Do you ask for it at the end of the transaction or do you have multiple stops and waypoints on the path toward that closing where you would ask for the review? Some platforms have different rules than others, but my thinking is whenever something good happens, it's an opportune moment to ask for the review. Okay, so what's an example of that? Well, it could be a ratified purchase contract. Congratulations, we're under contract. Is there an opportunity to ask for the review? If you don't get the review then, maybe we ask again later on when we clear all the contingencies. Now, use your discernment once more. If the deal's hanging on by a thread because inspection was ah, a little terrifying, then maybe don't ask at that moment because we qualify it with our statement, our heading of whenever something good happens. So maybe then it's at the clear to close or maybe it's at a final walkthrough. Again, most agents ask for the review at closing. I would argue that's not an ideal moment. That's my own opinion. You may disagree with me. And then I would say post-occupancy is a fantastic opportunity to ask for the review. Sending them a handwritten note or a closing gift or checking in a week or two or three weeks after closing when the dust is settled to ask for the review would be a reasonable moment where, hey, checking in to make sure you're happy and settled. And then leading into the ask, I'll talk about how to ask in a second, but that would be another opportunity for asking for the review. And it could even be that you do a 90 day sweep. Anybody who's closed in the past 90 days and hasn't left a review, we try again. So when should you ask for the review? Well, A, from the very get go, you should be seeding the idea of expecting a review, preparing the way for the review. And then you officially ask 
along the transaction waypoints whenever something good happens. And don't be prepared to only ask once. Persistence pays off. Build into your transaction to close process to ask multiple times to generate that review because by doing it again and again and again, you increase your odds tremendously of capturing what is a highly important piece of marketing collateral, an online review. Next up, let's talk about how to ask for the review. So first, let's talk about the mechanistic sort of technical way of asking for reviews. In a word, multi-channel. A lot of agents make the mistake, I think it's a mistake, of only using one communication channel when asking for the review. For example, if it's a Google business profile, Google gives you a custom intake link for collecting reviews, you might send that link over to a customer via email and say, hey, please leave me a review, click here. I know those aren't the words you would use, just work with me, we're talking about the technical logistics for a second here. That's okay, but easy to ignore. However, if you were to accompany that email with a text message that said, hey, by the way, I just sent you an email with this link asking for the review, would you please look at it and fill it out ASAP or something to that effect, not those words, but that idea, the simple idea of attaching the text message to accompany the email is going to greatly increase the odds of that customer saying, okay, I'm gonna do it. Because you went multi-channel. There is magic in going multi-channel. So think about all the communication channels at your disposal for asking for the review. DMs, text messages, video messages, emails, uh, you could show up unannounced at their house with a Popeye. Just kidding, I wouldn't do that one. You could send a handwritten note with a QR code they can scan to go leave the online review. You could send a voicemail drop. You could call them. You could do lots of things to ask for the review. There are all these different communication channels at your fingertips. My advice is, one, go multi-channel. Don't just use one at a time. Use two or three at a time to really not be ridiculous, but make sure that you're cutting through the noise of their busy, hurried lives to be heard so that there's a greater chance of them actually taking action on your request for generating an online review. And I would build these steps, whatever you decide are gonna be your communication channels, build it into your process that is part of your transaction to close process. So whenever something good happens, we ask for the review. How do we ask for the review? Through a variety of communication channels. Now, how do we ask for the review? In terms of the words we use, I'm gonna recommend you consider Phil Jones two question questionnaire. So this is not designed inherently for reviews. However, it can be retooled and adapted for the use of collecting online reviews. One of the main objectives that a consumer has, whether they voice this or not, one of their main reasons for not leaving the review is, I don't know what to say. I don't have the words to say. And so what Phil Jones teaches in his two question questionnaire is, at the end of a transaction, for instance, or at the end of a working experience with the client, you would send them a two question questionnaire. I would go multi-channel, nudge them with a text, for instance, saying, hey, I just sent this to you, by the way. But you might email them a two question questionnaire. And here are the two questions. First, what three things did you enjoy best about working with us? Again, what three things did you enjoy best about working with us? Now, the interesting thing about asking for three points of what they enjoyed best, this is what Phil teaches, is the variety of responses you're gonna get. So Phil would tell you that the first answer is whatever they grabbed for and reached for first. Ah, uh, just, I need an answer, it was that. The second answer is the real answer. It's where they've had time to reflect and think, you know what really made a difference for us? What we really enjoyed was this. And then traditionally the third answer is something extra. Oh, and, and that too. It's an extra little bit of delight or something to that effect. So when you look at these, you have to kind of look at them through the lenses of, okay, the first answer is probably just what they reached for first. The second answer is the thing that really, really resonated with this particular client. And the third thing is the thing that was just extra. Oh, and this too, it was extra. Now, Phil's second question in the two question questionnaire is, if there were one thing you could change, what would that be? Now, most likely this two question questionnaire is being delivered via just an email. So once you get the email reply from the recipient, your customer, and again, you might have to follow up a couple of times to get them to reply, but this is really important intel for your business. Once you get their email back, you're gonna reply using another one of Phil Jones' magic phrases dubbed a favor. So your reply back might look something like this or be worded something like this. Hey, name, thanks so much for this information. This is invaluable. I really appreciate it. You might acknowledge some of the specific points just to, you know, they gave you great data, great intel. And then you might slip in the magic phrase, just a small favor to ask dot, 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 or just a favor to ask, dot, dot, dot. The second thing you listed, and then maybe state what it was, the things they enjoyed best about working with you, really I think would resonate with a lot of people who are looking for an agent who can do that kind of work for them. 
Would you be willing to leave an online review on Google, on Yelp, on whatever platform you choose? If so, here's the link to go leave that online review. If you take the time to ask customers what they really think about an experience, which is why I love Phil's two question questionnaire, and then you use that to kind of leapfrog into the request for the review, in the end, you're gonna get way higher quality reviews and your reviews are your reputation. Not what you say about yourself, but what others say about you. It matters in the context of getting found by your next prospective customer. So there you have it, where, when, and how to ask for online reviews. I talked about why it matters too, because reviews are your reputation. I'm curious, when, where, and how are you asking for reviews? Let us know in the comments. And my advice to everybody who's watching right now is go check that comments thread because I'm willing to bet, I'm counting on everybody, there's gonna be a lot of great ideas in that comments thread. Thank you so much for watching. Until next week, this is This Week in Marketing.